Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have a special video regarding the latest jailbreak for iOS 9.3.5 and a downgrade tutorial, which is what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do from iOS 9.3.5 all the way back to iOS 6.1.3. So with that being said, guys, let's get straight into this video. All right, so this video is strictly meant for the iPhone 4S, which is what I'm using right now. I have heard that it works for the iPad 2. I am not too sure on which devices are capable of doing this, but if you guys do have an iPhone 4S, then you guys are good to go with this tutorial. Also, this is edited. I forgot to tell you guys that this is only available for the Mac OS system. So if you guys are on a Windows computer, then you guys want to go ahead and launch up a virtual box if you guys have the ability to do that with your guys' specs on your PC. So since QuickTime is not working with the iPhone 4S, all I can do is just record from my iPhone as you guys can see right here. But I'm going to show you on my 4S right now. I am running iOS 9.3.5 right here and this is a 16 gigabyte model that I found on eBay. So let that alone and off to the side. What we need to do first off is let's go ahead and try to get a fresh device. So go ahead and back up your guys' iDevice if you guys have or want to via iTunes. And then what you guys want to do next is jailbreak the device if you guys have not. Go ahead and click on the card that is on the top or right hand side of this video right now. And it will redirect you to how to jailbreak on iOS 9.3.5. All right, so there you go. It's just side loading the IPA right now. And this is just temporary, guys. This is necessary, and we need to have this on our iDevice in order to downgrade. So you guys cannot skip this step at all. All right, so once the IPA just side loaded, go ahead and open up Phoenix for the jailbreak. And what you guys want to do from here is just jailbreak the device. So right there, go to accept, and then proceed with jailbreak and begin the installation for the jailbreak. And I'll see you guys once it is done jailbreaking the iDevice, and I'm on Cydia. All right, so once you guys are here inside of Cydia, what you guys want to do is you want to search up Open SSH, and then you guys want to install that as well as any other changes that you guys have when starting up Cydia for the first time. So let's go ahead and just finish that up. And then once it is done, I see you guys in that side. All right, so once you guys respring your guys' iDevice, Open SSH is now installed. There's nothing you need to configure. So let's go ahead and just leave our iPhone 4S off to the side and just plugged into our laptop or PC, whichever one you guys have. And let's go ahead and move on to what we need to do on the computer. So inside of the description, I've go ahead and left links for Odysseus. What you guys want to do is you guys want to install that as well as the IPSW for the corresponding iPhone or iPad, which you are doing. And like I said, this is only working for the 4S and iPad 2 that I've seen currently on the subreddit. So I will link those IPSWs inside of the description and download the corresponding IPSW of iOS 6.1.3 to which of your iDevice that you're using right now. So in my case, I'm using the iPhone 4S and I got the iPhone 4S iOS 6.1.3 right here. Now, next thing you guys want to do is you want to go ahead and just highlight it all and just name it to iOS 6 just for reference in the future. So from here, go ahead and download the Odysseus OTA zip file open it up and extract it and just put it onto your desktops for easier access in this whole entire process so from here go ahead and drag in the iowa 6 ipsw inside of the odysseus root folder right here and then you want to open up a terminal if you guys do not know where that's at go ahead and go into finder and from here go into applications then go down to utilities and then right here on the bottom terminal is right there for you to open up so I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal, which is right here. Now you guys want to type in this, which will be in the description as well. So go ahead and copy the first line that you guys see. is CD with a little squiggly sign, and then it goes all the way to Mac OS forward slash. So copy that first line, and then just do Command V inside of terminal, then press Enter. Now once you guys are there, it'll say Mac OS right here and then the computer's name, which mine is Elite Apple Hacks. So from here, what you guys want to do is you want to copy the second line that is inside of the description, starting with dot forward slash IPSW, copy that, go back into the terminal and do Command V again, then press Enter. Now this will go ahead and create a custom IPSW specifically for your iDevice. Now this may take some time, so go ahead and sit back and relax as it took me about five to 10 minutes for it to finish. 
Okay, so while we are waiting, we need to know the IP address on our iDevice that we are using. So from our iDevice, while the computer is doing its thing right now, let's go ahead and find it out. So go ahead and go into the settings. Don't worry about that little dot. That's from my microphone. But from here, you guys want to go ahead and find your Wi-Fi. Then you want to click on the little I on the right-hand side. Click on that. Then your guys' IP address on your iDevice will be displayed right there. And you guys should be good to go in the following steps. Okay, so making the custom IPSW just now finished, as you guys can see, the next line starts off with Mac OS, then my computer name, Elite Apple Hacks, and it does say Bash at the very top, which indicates that it's ready for the next process. So from here, go ahead and get the third line inside of the description, starting with dot forward slash iDevice Restore, copy that one, and then go inside a terminal again and do Command V to paste it, and then press Enter one time. Now, once this is done, your iDevice will prompt you if you guys want to trust the computer, go ahead and trust it. Then on our computer, it does say that we do have a custom SHSH blob saved for iOS 6.1.3, so this is good. So the next thing you guys want to, you guys want to copy the fourth line that is inside of the description, starting with dot forward slash expone tool. And then you guys want to copy that and like I said in the past, go ahead and go into terminal, command V to paste it, then go ahead and press enter one time and then you guys should be good to go. Now the next part is where the IP address comes from. So from here, go ahead and grab the next line that is inside of the description starting with SCP space pwned IBSS. So copy that line. Let's go into terminal and let's go ahead and paste it. Now where it says IP, go ahead and erase IP then type in the IP address that is corresponded to your iDevice so let me go ahead and enter mine so it should say root at and then the IP address so 192.168.0.16 and then colon for, uh, right after it then go ahead and press enter now once this is done it's gonna go ahead and ask for a remote host Okay, I have finally fixed the error for SSH. So if this is not your guys' first time, then you guys will receive an error regarding recent hosts or something in that nature. So if this is your first time, this is what you guys are gonna wanna see. You guys wanna just type in yes right here, then just press enter, and then the password, which is Alpine by default. So go ahead and type in Alpine. You guys will not see it being typed, but trust me, it is being typed out. So once you guys have that type, go ahead and press enter one more time, then it will copy pwned IBSS as well as Kloader onto our iDevice. So from here, what you guys wanna do is you guys now want to SSH into your iDevice. So where the next line is on the description, you guys wanna copy that and paste it inside of terminal as usual. But where it says IP, you wanna go ahead and just delete that and then type in the IP address that you guys just used in the previous command. So in my case, it's 192.168.0.16. Then go ahead and press enter. Go ahead and type in Alpine, which is the default root password. Go and press enter. Now you guys can see it is working and I am SSH'd onto my iDevice where it has root and then the pound sign right after. So from here, what you guys wanna type out is the next line that is inside of the description, which is a dot K loader space pwned IBSS. So copy that and paste it inside of terminal, press enter one time. Then on your iDevice, you guys will see that it did shut off right away. And then from here, it will enter KDFU mode. So from here, your iDevice is going to stay black. So what you guys want to do is you want to press Command T inside of the terminal to open up a new tab. Now from here, what you guys want to do is you want to go ahead and copy the last and final strand that is inside of the description, starting with CD and then press Command V to paste it. Now from here, go ahead and press Enter and then you guys will be on Mac OS again. Now what you guys want to do is on our iDevice, since it's in KDFU mode, you guys want to just unplug it from your computer, then just plug it in again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just connect right there. Now once it's connected, you guys will see that iTunes will discover it and it's gonna say it's in recovery mode. Just press okay and if iTunes open up, just go ahead and just ignore that. Now the last and final line that you guys will wanna copy is a dot forward slash iDevice restore, which is inside of the description. Go ahead and press command V to paste it. Now press enter and then from here, it will go ahead and upload the custom IPSW, which is on iOS 6.1.3 that we made in the beginning so from here don't worry about those little pop-ups that you 
that I am getting right here. This is just from my virtual machine that it is trying to connect to. So this is all you're going to see for the next couple of minutes until the whole entire restore process goes ahead and finishes up. Now you guys will see the iOS 6 Apple logo instead of the iOS 7 and up Apple logo, which is just a straight white Apple. There is a little slash that indicates that the IPSW for iOS 6 is loading on our iDevice. So let's go ahead and just wait for it. And this might take around 5 to 10 minutes, roughly depending on the speed of your computer as well as the read write onto your iDevice. So from here, I'll see you guys once it is all completed. All right, so after a couple of hours of figuring out what the problem was and what was going on with my phone, I finally got it to work. So this is what you guys should see at the very end. It should say a Mountain New File System got status message, then status of store finished, and then it should redirect you back to your own laptop. So, so from here, guys, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like on my own phone. So as you guys can see, there is the iOS 6 startup. So if I swipe over and let's go ahead and just log in really quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and press join on my regular Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and enable location services. It's gonna press next, set up as new iPhone. Let's go ahead and just skip everything right now. So skip. Now let's go ahead and press agree. Let's just not use Siri for right now. Next. Don't send next and start using iPhone. Now, as you guys can see, I am on iOS 6. There are some new carrier settings for me. But yeah, as you guys can see, it's functionally working fine. And going into the settings, general, about. Now, as you guys can see, I do have iOS 6.1.3, and this is on a 16 gigabyte model iPhone 4S. Now, another thing that is awesome, so if you guys do not like iOS 6.1.3, you guys can actually update to iOS 8.4.1. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and delete that after it's done. But anyways, let's go ahead and show you guys how to jailbreak it on your iDevice. Let me go ahead and show you guys how to jailbreak the iDevice right now. Now on Mac and Windows 10, unfortunately, it is not going to work. So you're going to have to downgrade the OS. So I recommend you guys doing this with a virtual machine, which is what I had did in VMware. So from here, as you guys can see, I already pre-installed Windows 7 on here. So according to the form, Windows 7 is working completely fine with the jailbreak of Post Expone, which is the jailbreak utility that is used to jailbreak iOS 6.1.3. So from here, let me go ahead and just wait for it to start up really quickly. Now, also, I also need to let you guys know that the iTunes version that you guys are going to want to install is version 11.1.5. So once you guys are installing iTunes on your virtual machine, as you guys can see, once you guys are here, what you need to do is you need to install iTunes version 11.1.5 just Google that and then just put space download and you guys will find the exe for it but once you guys have that just go ahead and install it and do all that good stuff then download post expone right here and make sure it is running under Windows XP service pack 3 so if you guys do not know how to do that just go ahead and just right click on the exe go to properties right here and go into compatibility and run this program in compatibility mode for Windows XP Service Pack 3. So since I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and press start. I'm gonna go ahead and press yes. Now plug in your iDevice to begin. What I'm gonna be doing since it is currently using it on my Mac, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the settings button right here. Let's bring up the Apple iPhone. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that right here. Now it'll plug in itself into the virtual machine. So as you guys can see, the iPhone 4S on 6.1.3 was detected. I'm gonna go ahead and press jailbreak. Now from here, it's gonna go ahead and just go through the process of the jailbreak. So it might have a little glitch as you guys can see. Hang on one second. Let me go ahead and try to clear that out. All right, so waiting for the device to reboot. So on my screen right now, on my iDevice, it just went into a reboot stage. And let's go ahead and just fast forward it until it's done. So as you guys can see, it is now poning the Apple Mobile File Integrity. So I'm gonna assume this is part of the jailbreak process and what the exploit is being used for. So as you guys can see, it's currently working and my phone is uh, turning on and off. Now let's go ahead and wait till it's successfully finished and jailbroken. All right, so it now says it's done and the device will reboot a couple times. It just rebooted one time for me and it did do a little respring. So from right now where I'm talking, it is showing an Apple logo. And once it boots up, I will go ahead and show you guys what I see on my screen.
Okay, so the device just restarted, so I'm going to go ahead and slide to unlock right here. Now swiping over to the right, these guys can see Cydia is now installed onto the iDevice. So there you guys go, how to downgrade from iOS 9.3.5 all the way to 6.1.3 and jailbreak the iDevice as well. So if you guys like this tutorial, go ahead and leave a like. Let's go ahead and try to smash 10 likes again. It's so simple to do. Just go ahead and just click it down below or tap on it if you guys are on mobile. Don't forget to subscribe to get videos just like this in the future as well as a lot more videos regarding this kind of stuff in the future. Snapshot this outro to add me on Snapchat as well. And don't forget to follow me on my Twitter page and my Facebook page to be informed on anything jailbreak related and what's been going on in the jailbreak world. So with that being said, guys, I'll see you guys in my next video. This is Elite Apple Hacks signing out.